A wind turbine has blades that sweep an area that's pretty big. If you're not sure what a wind turbine is, let me draw a wind turbine for you. It generally looks like, um, okay, let's draw it out. You have a, a centerpiece. You have some blades. Let's say it's a tree blade. <laughs> tree blade out of shape turbine. And then it's there. So when the wind blows into the turbine, it makes the turbine rotate. So like that, rotate. And that's where you have an area that comes out. So this turbine will convert the power in the wind to electrical power with a certain efficiency. So what is the conversion happening here? You have a machine, you feed it kinetic energy, which is going to be what gives us the power in the wind, convert it somehow into electrical power at an efficiency of only half. Okay, so we'll lose half of our energy or power. So why is the electrical power generated if the wind speed is 10 meters per second and the density of air is given? Okay, so let's imagine this. Huh? Okay, there is wind going into the turbine, something like, like this. So imagine a lot of air coming in at a certain velocity. This is the velocity of the air. What equation shall we use to calculate power? We know we have power equals to change in energy over time. We have, mm, oh, there's the other one, force times velocity. In this case, I think we will stick to the first one because the second one, force times velocity. Oh, if you want to use FV, you will need to ask the question, okay, the wind exerts a force because it is moving at a certain speed of air. But then this V here is not the speed of the air. This V is the velocity at which the object is being moved. So this turbine is rotating like this wall at a certain tangential speed, this turbine. And we do not know this information. This one is supposed to be turbine. They only give us V of air. So general rule of thumb is whenever there are turbine questions in AS level, probably you do not want to use this because there's too many velocity, we don't have enough information. So a better way to do turbine-related question, whether it's a water turbine or an air turbine, is to use the change in energy. Okay, don't use the V1, uh, too many velocity. One velocity here, one velocity here, not enough information. Cannot solve. So let's look at the, let's look at the, um, what are we looking at? Ah, yes, the change in energy. So let's draw the air. What, what energy does the air have? Kinetic energy is moving, right? Blowing in. So we can say that this will be... The change in kinetic energy, half mv squared over t. Is there a change in kinetic energy? Well, yes, you assume, you have to assume that all kinetic energy is converted into electrical. So from high velocity, you stop zero velocity. So the change in Ke will be half mv squared minus zero over t. Since it's zero, we don't need to write the zero, right? So we can just say, ah, yeah, just half mv squared over t la. Or delta t, if you want to put it that way. Next, we know the v, this v is what? v of air, not v of the turbine <laughs> rotating in a circle. v of air. And we don't know the mass of the air. That's a problem. We need to find the mass of the air. But they give us other things. They give us area. They give us density. I think what we need to do is the turbine trick. So imagine this. Every second, a column of air will slam into the turbine. It looks like a cylinder like this. Yeah, I try my best to draw lah. Okay, cylinder of air slamming into the turbine. And this whole column of air has a certain volume to it. And density is mass over volume. So mass will be density given to us times volume. If we know the volume, you can straight away calculate an equation here, uh, calculate a value here, or I'm going to plug everything to the same equation. So the mass will be density times volume of a cylinder. If you want to use in terms of cross-section area, the cross-section area, times the length, which is this length, L, we can say this is A times L. Problem number two, what is the length? They never give also? Ah, but, but we do know that if you say have a particle of air here, it will be moving with a certain speed, right? This air is moving at 10 meters per second. This is the velocity of the air. 
So distance travel in one second, we can say distance is velocity times time. You know, Stuva equation S equals to ut half a t squared. So we sub that in and we get mass, or rather the change in mass in a certain amount of time will be the v a v rho a v t. Ah, this is the change in mass every second. How how heavy is the air that slammed into your turbine? This trick you must know for all kind of propeller or turbine related question in A levels. Okay, let's plug everything into our main equation now. So we have half mass will be rho a velocity of air times t. That's the mass, and of course times the velocity of air squared divided by t. So this will give us half t and t cancel out. So this will be half rho a v cube. And the v here is the v of the air, not the turbine rotating. So we will have, um, plug in the equation, right? Okay, we have enough information. This will be the input power, which is the kinetic energy that goes into the machine of the engine of the turbine or the motors or whatever. That is so half 1.3. 2,000, and how fast is the wind that causes this thing to turn? 10 square. Eh, 10 cube. My bad. Okay, calculator time. We'll get a pretty big amount of energy, so it's 1.3 times 10 to the 6 watts rate of change of kinetic. Remember, we were changing what? Kinetic to electrical. But wait! Efficiency! GG. We lose a lot of energy in the process, oh. so we done, we lose out 50%. So we only get 50% as electrical now. So we just need to find, we want to do the calculation. The power that actually comes out, which is electrical, is the input power, which is from kinetic energy of the wind, times 50%. And so if we, I kind of shortcut, I just divide by 2. I, you will get about 650 times 10 to the 3 watts which is kilowatts. So the best choice we can choose is B, kilowatts. So once again, a reminder, when you have turbines uh, related, don't use P equals FV because chances are you, need, you don't have information for V of turbine. Although you can find the F, which is dmvdt of the air. We usually will not have enough information. Okay, so that's all for this video. Hope that's helpful. I'll see you in the next one.